Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, and thank you for joining us today for our Pure Heart online services. Very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, including adoptive and foster moms. If you're watching on Facebook, click a like on this video. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And we're so excited to be connecting with you in your homes today. And for the thousands of you who have joined Pure Heart and discovered Pure Heart over the last couple months, we're so glad to have you hanging out in our online church family. So here we go. We're gonna take this time together to refocus and encourage our hearts. We're gonna cast out fear and lies from our minds. We're gonna lean in, we're gonna grab our Bibles, we're gonna open our Bible apps. Let's worship together, let's grow together and become more like Jesus for the sake of others. Welcome to church. Well, thank you for joining us today on this Mother's Day weekend. We're so excited to have you with us. Let's just give glory to the King of Kings that he deserves. It. I count on one thing It's the same God that never fails When I fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out Working all things out Oh yes I Yeah. 
worship. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. We respond to your love by worship, by giving, because you freely first gave. God, we offer our hearts to you. And we offer our tithes and our offerings in response to your love. Worthy, worthy Jesus. God, we ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings, that you'd multiply them and that you would guide them in the right areas of need in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Pure Heart is doing some great things. Here's Pastor Matt. God is doing amazing things in us and through us for the sake of others. And we are so blessed that with your cheerful and generous giving, we get to be a part of the plans that God has for this world. It is so fantastic to see what God is doing through our online experiences for youth. Last weekend, we had two new students who'd never even been to Pure Heart before join in our service. Our last week's message reached over 1,200 people. We have students who are far from Jesus now engaging on our social media. We've been inspired to see every student on our schools reach for Christ. Even though now church looks different, God is still moving. Also through our Valley Conference Roundtable, we've started doing weekly Zoom calls of leadership conversations with some incredible pastors. We've averaged 30 or 40 youth pastors each week, and we've seen over 100 leaders engage with our Valley Conference Zoom calls. This is growing and building a support community for many youth pastors who have felt overwhelmed with the huge needs of youth who are struggling during this time of crisis. So as you put your tithes and offerings in the mail, as you're giving online or in the Pure Heart app, know that this is what your generosity is going to support. You can also now take out your phone and text the word PHGIVE to 97000. This will send you a link to our online giving. You can also download the Pure Heart app in your phone's app store and give on there, or go to the website pureheart.org give. Thank you, family, for your continued support of Pure Heart, as God has continued to expand our reach across the nation and across the world to reach hurting and lost people. And every week we pray for another church because we believe that the kingdom of God is bigger than what's just happening here with Pure Heart. And God's doing amazing things in his churches all around the world. So today we're praying for Pastor Aubrey Barnwell and First New Life Church. During this time of COVID-19, their team is working to stay connected with their local community and congregation. They've been doing Zoom calls and Facebook Live. They're engaging with their members to maintain their spiritual, mental, and physical well-being during these times of COVID-19. So Holy Father, we pray for Aubrey Barnwell and First New Life Church, God. We believe that right now, God, you are empowering them and strengthening them as they're bringing wellness spiritually, mentally, physically to their people, God, that you're giving them fresh vision for the whole person to lead their people through this time, God. We pray that finances are gonna be coming to them, that you're going to help them, Lord, that you're gonna give their leadership wisdom on how to use those finances during this time, God. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Bless their church, God. Let it thrive. Amen. Hey, I wanna take a moment and thank you for checking out who Pure Art is. Thank you for visiting our website, seeing what we're all about. We live stream on the weekends. Also during the week, you can check out recorded services and be connected that way. At Pure Heart, we have a passion to see hurting and broken people find healing. We care deeply about people. We say all the time, it's okay to not be okay here. And you do not have to pretend and you don't have to stay stuck. We would love for you to find hope, find encouragement, find love, and find that freedom, maybe that healing you're looking for in life. Also, we have a passion for our community. We talk all the time, a big question we ask is, if we were gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? Would our neighborhoods miss us? And we're doing all kinds of things to make a difference in our city because we care about you. We care about people. We serve a great God and we would love to introduce you to Him and for you to find a place to belong at Pure Heart. Thank you for taking the time to see who we are. We can't wait to find out who you are. Pure Heart family, many of you are facing extra time in quarantine or because of social distancing, and you felt isolated and disconnected from community. So we're starting our next batch of virtual online small groups for you to stay connected and grow in your relationship with God and others during this time. The last ones were so good and we heard so many positive stories come out of them. These groups give you a chance to talk about the weekly message, pray and connect for each other. And so go to pureheart.org circles 
or text circles to 97000 to get a link. Then complete the form and we'll send you details of your next steps. And also, we need prayer in our lives and we need each other. So on Wednesday nights on Pure Hearts Facebook page, we have both. First, our live stream prayer event led by Pastor Paul and the Pure Heart staff members who co-host with him. And it's so unifying as we join together to pray for each other and seek God. And if you have prayer requests, submit them on the chat so we can join with you in praying for those requests. And directly after, we host a Facebook premiere of last week's message. Join in if you hadn't had a chance to watch the message on the weekend, or you wanna share in the chat what God's been showing you from the message. And finally, we wanna make sure that you stay connected and you don't miss out on seeing the amazing things that God is letting us do as a church in the season. So follow us on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, go to your phone's app store and download the Pure Heart app. And Pure Heart family, we know that God is gonna to continue to grow us into becoming more like Christ as we remember that the church is not a building. So lean in, take lots of notes, jump in on the live chat, and let's grow together. Here's Pastor Dan. Happy Mother's Day weekend, everybody. To all the moms out there, we love you so much. We, we love all of our adoptive mom, our foster moms, all of our, our mentor moms. You're just loving kids and encouraging kids. Maybe you wanted to have kids, but you didn't, or you weren't able to have children, but you've been loving kids as well. Thank you for your mother's heart. Thank you for all that you do. So it's Mother's Day weekend. We're gonna do something a lot different than we've ever done before. This is totally different than we've ever done before. I have something very special for you today. And before we get there, I just wanna encourage you um, at the end of this next segment, I'm gonna come back and share with you a devotional thought, just something the Lord's really put on my heart to share for Mother's Day weekend. So I know that's an interesting time right now with all that's going on with COVID-19 and you know we got a lot of you know sheltering in place stuff going on and families are getting on each other's nerves a little bit. A friend of mine sent me this tweet the other day, Chris Moore, youth pastor. The tweet said this, my wife and I played this fun game during quarantine. It's called, why are you doing it that way? And there's never a winner. <laughs> it just made me laugh so hard. I'm like, isn't that the truth? So something very, very special for you today. I'm so excited about this. Happy Mother's Day one more time. Here we go. Here's my big surprise. My whole family is going to join me for the first half of this Mother's Day message, and they're growing by the second. Look at this guy right here. Stand up, Luke. Show, show how short you are. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. You guys excited? Abigail, you excited? Mom, Woo! you excited? Yeah. Josh, yeah. you fired up? You ready to go? Looking good, everybody? Josh, the hair is hey, looking, hey, a, hey. hey, hair's looking amazing. <laughs> All right. Ow. So we've been hanging out as a family in this whole COVID-19 experience, getting quality time together. That's been so much fun. And I've heard every once in a while a couple of things I had, didn't think I would hear ever again now that you guys are older. Like, I think at one point I heard Abby say to Josh, please stop biting me, which I don't know, what, what was that all about? I've never bit my sister. <laughs> Has he ever been? Yes. yes, exactly. All right, which I think is a little strange. I don't know. And we got Big Luke down here. He is actually uh, working for Chick fil A. He's an essential service on the front lines of providing families fried chicken. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, you enjoying that working out in the line? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, what's, you like? what's your schedule like these days? It's like 10 15 to 9. 10 15 to 9? Yeah. That's a People long People don't stop day. buying chicken every day. <laughs> No, so we want to do a couple things real quick. First thing we want to do is talk about how this amazing woman makes our house more joyful, how she makes us laugh. All right. So we're going to be as nice as kind, right? Kind. Always kind. Always kind. That's good. <laughs> kind, kind. All right. Luke, we'll start with you. How does mom make you laugh? What's funny about this wonderful Italian hot-blooded woman? Well, my mom is a big Hallmark mom, so she'll go through like sprees. It's the same movie over and over again, just different it's characters. It's different. That's it's Hallmark. Not, Luke, Hallmark is I different. cannot sit through more than half of one, but anyway, she well, loves that's Hallmark. that's you with every movie, Luke. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. But yeah, she loves Hallmark. She'll go like watch Hallmark after Hallmark, and then she'll switch and just be watching Dateline at like 10 p.m. <laughs> And I walk in, I'm like, or a murder, murder mystery. She's like, it was Joey. I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes from Joey. Joey. What Who's that? Joey? Who's Joey? Hallmark to murder <laughs> mysteries. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. It's, I mean, I can see how that works. Abby, how about you? 
Um, the funniest thing about mom is when we'll be watching like any movie or any show and for some reason she always asks me questions like I've seen it before, but we're watching it at the same time. <laughs> for the first time. For the first time. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Constant I questions. Mom's the worst questions. to Constant. watch movies with. <laughs> That's right. How about you, Does big man? Die? What makes Does you laugh? Does mom do? Honest, what does she do? Like, Come on. You know you got some good stuff. Yeah, my mom, for some reason she can never find her phone. <laughs> and if she looks hard enough, it's always usually in the freezer. <laughs> Never in plain sight, but it's always it in the freezer. In the She's freezer. always cooking, so it's always in the freezer. <laughs> How many times have you heard this in your life? Could you please just call my phone? <laughs> just call my That's phone. That's like an everyday, like 20 times a day thing. <laughs> call it my has phone. been in the freezer. Really, right, so well, we won't tease you too much. It's not okay. a roast. Yeah. We're here to love you. It's Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. Very exciting. So, Luke, what is it about yes. mom that makes your life better that you admire about her? Yeah, mom just brings such a level of hospitality to our home and you know, anyone who comes to our house just feels so welcomed and invited. And I go to Grand Canyon, and we have so many people from out of state, and I have a, a few friends that are from different parts of the, you know, the country, and they'll come over, and they'll just feel like they're at home. You know, people who are homesick as their freshmen, you know, they come into our house, and they feel like mom is their mom, and that um, she'll just cook for them. And we had a Friendsgiving, and she literally made, like, enough food for, like, 50 people. And there we don't want to run out. There's 12 of us. Yeah. And, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and the to-go boxes. Yeah. Everybody gets a to-go to -go box. box. Everybody gets yeah. a to-go box. And then when they all had to move off campus, I mean, I still get texts like, man, we miss your mom. We want to come back and make cookies with your mom. And, you know, that level of hospitality, she just makes everyone feel loved, and she's awesome. Mm, that's good. Abby, how about you, sweetheart? Uh, my mom is insanely um, caring. For my 16th birthday, she made me a book. Um, that was just me grow and her as I grew up over the years. And yeah. it was the, probably the most special thing yeah. for me. And she encourages you all the time, I know. And that, she, you did. You put together this entire book, like a scrapbook of memories from the time, Abby, you were born all the way until just some, about a couple of months ago. Yeah. That was good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. How about you, big man? Yeah, one thing I love about my mom is that she's always believed in me and always pushed me to do better. So... With school, I've always struggled, and she's been there every day just helping me try to do better and to get through school and to go back and finish it out. I just love how much you're always pushing me and wanting me to do better in life. That's good. That's good. We do love you, Mom. And um, love you. kids, one thing I need to let you know real quick is just because you said some nice things, we had a good time right here, this does not negate the fact you still have to buy Mother's Day gift. Yeah. All right. Still have to get the mother. Wait, so you're I'll text you my list. I can't give you a handprint, <laughs> some paint on handprint. I already texted you oh, a so list. Cool. I'm thing. the only one who's gotten it. Yeah. You're the only one who bought her something. Actually, already? I may have got her something. I don't even have a job. <laughs> I work from home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you so much. You're out. See you later. Peace. What would you say to moms today that are watching all around the world? What would you say to moms today? Well, one thing I would like to say is just I would like to talk about expectations. And I think just the expectations that we put on ourselves as moms. Um, we got pregnant in our first year of marriage and we had Josh. And then, well, we had a miscarriage and then we had Josh. We got pregnant right away. And then when Josh was only five months old, we got pregnant with Luke. And around that time... Um, <laughs> and then after that, Abby yeah. came a couple years later. After yeah. That, we figured out what was so, going on. Yeah, we figured okay. out what was figured going out. on. Figured it out. But when um, we got pregnant with Luke, my mom's cancer also came back. And so mm -hmm. she was fighting and battling with that. I had these two boys. They were 14 months apart. And I had these huge expectations on myself. So we would get together with our family a lot. And I remember when Dan's parents would be praying for us. And... Um, they would pray for me, and there was a time, when it was actually Mother's Day, and they were praying for, for me. I was peeking outside because while we were praying, and I remember thinking, what is Luke doing? What does he have in his hand? And when we got done praying, I looked, and Luke had a baby bird in his hand. He was like jumping up and down a on the trampoline. A, a, dead, a, dead, baby yeah, a dead baby bird. So <laughs> I was basically living um, in chaos. I have sand on the floor in my kitchen. I have... You know, the boys were covered in mud every single day from head to toe, every single day. We have, and Abby was no different. She, she has um, just paint in her hair everywhere. And this was just every single day. One story in particular is I was coming to church, and again, I really think it was on a holiday, probably Mother's Day, and we were supposed to be parking in a back lot because we were under construction, and I came riding up in my minivan, bottoming out like as I came in, and the shoes were flying, and then I remember um, 
pulling Abby out of the car and I pulled Josh out of the car by his shirt and people are looking at me and I remember Abby was in her princess dress and her hair was really freaked out <laughs> and she had even the clicky shoes on like of the a Cinderella dress and I remember thinking that's not good and then Josh had on one shoe and a sock with a hole in it and I said where's your other shoe he did not know and I said you're going to class that way so I got out of the van with and I was pulling him by his shirt and people are like Nicole you okay and I was like not really and so we started walking and one of the other pastor's wife's was like, oh, I really wish my husband would let my kids come to church like that. In their princess Translating, costumes. bless your heart, you know, <laughs> you're a real idiot over here. <laughs> so I, and then I checked Josh into the children's ministry with the one shoe and the sock with the hole in it. And everyone like, you okay, Nicole? I'm like, nope. So I remember like going into church late, of course, and Dan's dad saying, are you okay? He called me Cookie. You okay, Cookie? And I was like, no. I told him what happened. He goes, give me the kids slips. I'm going to go get them after church. But just, I was always a mess and not really knowing what was going on in my life, living in chaos. So, and I remember ministering to some women. Just last year, I was a mentor for our mom's group. And I remember them talking about, you know, we have these, like these pages I was showing you, scrapbooking, but they are under so much pressure and they have social media and them yeah. saying Instagram, that, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Instagram, Facebook. And a lot of them saying that they had to even go off because they couldn't even handle the pressure of being on there because you don't measure up. We need to all understand that we are a work in progress. In Philippians 1, 6, it says, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day until Jesus Christ returns. If we ever feel like we have arrived, we better be standing in front of Jesus. I heard that from Joyce Meyer one time. But anyway, <laughs> life is a journey. You're and quote, we, <laughs> You're dropping some Joyce Meyer's truth. Here. Yeah, it just ages me. But life is a journey and we need to learn to enjoy the process and the transformation that God is leading us through. And it, that's been really hard for me because I'm a perfectionist and I, I'm really all or nothing in, in my days. But I've really learned that life is a journey. Yeah. So, Well... I want to say to you how grateful I am that what you do. You're an amazing mom. And I know that some of the pictures that you showed and that being real about the fact that you have these great expectations, but things don't always work out the way that you wanted them to. But I couldn't do what I do without you. I couldn't um, serve here, do the things in the city, work with government agencies, all the stuff that God's allowed us to do as a church. I couldn't do it without you. And our kids are where they are today, the joy that they have, how much they've grown. And Josh with school, all the things that have happened You've been the, the center. You've been the backbone of our family and everything that we do. And I just thank you for that. Even people will come up to Nicole every once in a while at church, every once in a great while, and they'll say, oh, isn't it wonderful to be married to Pastor Dan? You know, isn't he just wonderful? And you say what? It is. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. It That's is, good. Though. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. But it's hard to be in the bubble. It's hard to be in that little fishbowl as a family. But you do it so well. And you're real. You're who you are. We say all the time as a church, it's okay to not be okay, and it's not okay to pretend. And I love the fact that you live that out in your life. You're real about your life. The, the second thing, the last thing I want to ask you is, I know that Mother's Day is not the easiest day for moms. Um, there's some pain that comes with Mother's Day, and especially for you yeah. uh, with your mom. Would you just share a little yeah. bit about, because there's, there's moms listening today yeah. who are having a hard time on Mother's Day. So would you talk a little bit about your mom? Yeah, well, this is a hard one. Um, so like I said, the, um, the night before Luke was born, my mom passed away. Um, and before, in my 20s and in my teen years, my mom and I had some issues, you know, like a lot of people do, and there was a disconnect, but we had really worked on our um, relationship and there was a lot of healing that took place. She had written me a couple notes, and I mean, it's really briefly, but just um, one of the notes she wrote that there is no one on earth who can come take away the bond between a mother and her children because God put it there. And she had wrote another note just about 1 Corinthians, you know, love is patient, love is kind. And then at the end she put, I will never give up, give up on our relationship until God mends it, whether it be here or there in heaven. This one I really love. And she wrote in here that before Dan and I got married, that it gives me great relief to know that you're being taken care of by a great man. I am so happy you're happy. And then she put in there, enclosed as a free turkey for you. Just 
and then my grandma's, <laughs> it always comes you back know, to food, just <laughs> my grandma's um, stuffing recipe. But anyway, she was so happy that I was marrying Dan because our families were um, lifelong friends and she knew Dan and she got to be a part of Josh's first year of life. And I really feel like my mom would have been our, the greatest fans of my kids and watching Josh and Luke play sports together and watching Abby play volleyball and just, she was so tenacious. Abby had to do this project the other day and it had to rate where what you would become and one of hers was like a lawyer and she said, mom, I feel like you could have become a lawyer. And I remember my mom saying, you know, I could have been a lawyer. <laughs> and so anyway, I just think that I miss that and I miss the everyday things. And I think that's what a lot of us miss when it comes to these holidays and Mother's Day, but I think what's important is that that I mended my relationship with her. So if I could say to anyone that is to work on the relationships that you have in your family because it's so important. I did a memorial service last week for Colleen Hendricks's mom, Beverly. Um, she also had cancer and went home to heaven to be with Jesus. And it was a, it was a, it was a great time with family and close family, very small service with the whole COVID-19 thing that's going on. And, um, and Nicole was never able to uh, have a memorial for her mom. There's no no memorial service because when Luke was born, it was a, he was an emergency C-section. It was an emergency um, delivery, and it was you were actually anemic at one point, had yeah. to have a blood transfusion, and so it was just a very difficult season for Nicole, difficult season for our family. And her mom was only 54 years old when she passed away, went home to heaven, and and so we were driving to the to the cemetery to do the I was going to do the memorial, and I thought I think this is actually the place where Nicole's mom. Her body is buried and we had never been to the graveside, never. It's been 19, Luke's 19 years old, 19 years. And so I, when I finished the, the memorial, I, I turned and said to the guy that one of the guys that was working there, I said, could you look up a name for me? And so we got done and I turned to Nicole and he walked up. I said, did you find it? And he said, yes, yeah, so I know exactly where it's at. And I said, um, you know, your mom is buried here. Would you like to go to your mom's graveside? And so She's like, she's already getting teared up because we're the crying Stephens. We cry a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went over and first time in 19 years, um, it was in the month of May when her mom passed uh, this month, just two, two weeks after Mother's Day. And so we went to the grave, to her grave and we stood there and we just reflected. And it was really, in a lot of ways, I think healing for you. Matter of fact, we're actually going to go uh, this Sunday. You know, we're, re we're recording earlier here in the week, but we're going to go Sunday on Mother's Day as a family and um, you're gonna tell stories about mom and you're mm -hmm. gonna share some of your memories and we're gonna put some flowers yeah. there and have some some more closure. Yeah. Um, but what Nicole said is so real, like even if there's difficult relationships, and I know that for many this is not an easy day, um, we need to press in, we need to fight for those relationships. We need to be willing to extend forgiveness and to pray for one another. So I'd like to just real quick as we uh, wrap up this time together and in just a moment, I'm gonna come back and share a devotional for you for Mother's Day. But I'd like to take a moment and just pray for moms today and pray for all of us who maybe this isn't the easiest of days. Let's do that right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the incredible mother that sits to my left. I thank you for Nicole Marie Parati for bringing her into my life. I ask your blessings on your encouragement to her I thank you for her incredible vulnerability, her willingness to always be real, full of life, full of love, full of joy, full of passion, but to always be real. And I pray for moms out there today who maybe this isn't an easy day for them, or maybe there's, there's those women listening today that really long, or, or couples that really long to have a child, but they're not able to right now. And it's, this is a difficult day for them as well. Would you comfort, would you encourage, you meet people, Lord, right where they're at. And Father, where there's brokenness in relationship, or maybe there's a mom who's gone on to heaven or who has passed from this life and there was never able to be real closure in this life, would you bring peace? Would you bring comfort today? Would you bring strength? In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, sweetheart. Love you. I'm very proud of you. You glad this is over now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. I have an incredible wife. Nicole has such a vulnerable heart. She's so real with people. You just can't help but to connect with her heart. I wanna share with you two scenes from the New Testament, two scenes in the life of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I wanna, as I was reading this last week through the life of Mary and looking at the different moments she's mentioned in the gospels, two great characteristics about Mary jumped off the pages of the Bible and landed deep in my heart. And so I wanna share them with you right now. The first one, the first scene I wanna look at 
is when Mary, it's announced to Mary that she's going to become pregnant with Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Go with me to Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. Here's how the story goes. Luke 1 verse 26. It says this, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now watch Mary's response. This is so good. Mary says, it says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting might this be? Greatly troubled, you think so? An angel appearing out of nowhere and saying, you were highly favored, God is with you? I think I would be a little troubled. I think you would be a little troubled. Now watch the angel's response to Mary. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid. Why do angels always say that in the Bible? Okay, holy being appearing out of nowhere, I'll just not be afraid. Note to self, don't be afraid of the angel who just showed up to tell me this incredible news. It says, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God and you will conceive and you will give birth to a son. You are to call him, you will call him Jesus. Now, listen to the angel's description of Jesus. So good, verse 32. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary's next statement is a question. And the question is so good. Mary's question is so good. It would have been the question for any woman, any young woman especially in that moment. The question was this, how? How is this going to happen? How am I going to become the mother of the Son of God, the Son of God most high, who's going to have a kingdom that will never, ever, ever, ever end? How is that going to be possible? How will this be, Mary asked. And besides, by the way, FYI, I am a virgin. Angel answers and doesn't give her much clarity, I would say. The angel goes on and says, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. <laughs> Mary had to be like, time out. Um, still not a lot of detail there. Not quite sure how all that is going to happen. Now, I love the angel's encouragement. Now, the angel can see that Mary is afraid. He tries to encourage her. And this is what he said. He goes, oh, well, by the way, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. And then this next statement is so good. The angel says, for no word from God will ever fail. In the English language, it's almost impossible to catch the weight, the gravity of this statement. In the original language, the Greek language, the, the New Testament was written in the Greek language, it would read like this. God's word is unable to fail. God's word is unable to fail. It's not possible for God's word to fail. It's one thing to believe God's promise. It's a whole other thing entirely to walk in it. Because here's the deal. We all know this deep in our hearts. Believing and trusting are not the same. Because I believe a lot of things I don't do. We all do this. I mean, we all believe that exercise and vegetables are good for us. We just don't do enough of that, all right? We believe that forgiveness is good for us, yet we hold on to our bitterness. We believe that generosity is good for us, and yet we hold on to our time and to our treasures and even to our talents and our abilities, and we don't give away our lives. We hold on to our lives, even though we know it's good for us to be generous. We, we all know people who believe that God exists. We just don't live as if God is watching. We, we believe in God, but many Christians say, I believe in God, I believe in Christ, I've given my life to Him. But oftentimes we, we don't walk like we have done that. You see, I've said this many, many times, I've probably said it in this series a couple of times that I was in recently. I can believe all day long this stool can hold my weight. I can believe that this steel frame and this nice pattern, this whole stool is designed to hold my weight. I don't trust it until I put the full weight of my life on it. See, believing and trusting are not the same thing. And so I want you to watch as Mary, and this just jumped off the page of the Bible to me this last week. Watch as Mary puts the full weight of her life on God. Watch what she says. Such a beautiful moment. I am the Lord's servant. 
Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Now, when Mary does this, when she makes this statement, when she makes this declaration, she puts the full weight of her life on the, the word that just came to her from God, the promise that just came to her from God. Her whole future, her reputation, her very life was put on the line by trusting in what the angel said God was going to have happen to her, the privilege for her. You see, in those days, it was punishable by death to be caught in adultery. Mary is pledged to be married, married to Joseph. And now she was about to be found to be pregnant. In those days, that her reputation would have been ruined and she would have been, it would have been punishable by death for her to be found pregnant before she married Joseph. She'd have been considered an adulteress. And yet Mary says, Mary says, listen, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me as you have said. May that be done to me. May God's word be fulfilled. I love that. And then we don't know what the angel says exactly next, but maybe he said something like this. Okay, great. Glad that you're, you're all in. I'm going to go tell Joseph now because that could take a little extra convincing, all right? That first scene hit me so deep because I believe deep in the heart, deep in the heart of Mary, deep in the DNA and the fiber of her being and her soul, Mary had this beautiful, beautiful characteristic. She trusted God with everything that was in her. As a matter of fact, as, as leaders at Pure Heart, we have um, five core values. Our two top core values, here's one of our two top core values. Leaders trust God daily. See, as followers of Christ, one of the greatest questions that has to be answered, will I trust God no matter the circumstances, no matter what his word is to me, no matter what it is I'm going through, will I trust God? And deep in the heart of Mary, Mother Mary was this heart of trust. God, you say it, I believe it, and I'm gonna walk in it. Scene number two. Scene number two is to me, probably the most intense scene. It surrounds the crucifixion, the execution, the murder, if you will, of Jesus. This very son of promise that was given to Mary, this very son is now at about age 33, executed, killed by the Roman government at the urging of the Jewish leaders. And so we, we find this scene, it's an unbelievable, overwhelming scene that we discover. And it's every parent's nightmare, the death of their child, their child dying before them. We come across this scene, we watch Jesus is being tortured, he's being executed and slowly executed, by the way. He's beaten with an inch of his life, crown of thorns pressed onto his head, blood dripping down his face, beaten with a cat of nine tails, flesh ripped from his body, spikes into his wrists, spikes in through his feet, nailed on a cross and lifted and dropped into a hole. And in this moment, we catch one of the most powerful scenes in the New Testament. In Matthew's gospel, it records the scene this way in Matthew 27, verse 55. And understand this, all this, most of the disciples, every disciple except for John have fled the scene. They ran, they were scared, they abandoned Jesus. John is the only one, the only one of Jesus' disciples, the men that showed up at the cross. And watch what is said here of the women. It says this in verse 55 of chapter 27 of Matthew. Many women, say that with me, many women were there and they were watching from a what? a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. But watch what John includes. In John chapter 19, verse 25, this is what John writes. These are beautiful words. It says, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Many women stood at a distance, but near the cross stood his mother. This moment is so powerful, so overwhelming, so beautiful. It's tenacious, never-ending, intense love. In Jesus, this next scene in verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother, everybody say the next word with me, there. When he saw his mother there. Now, I've had moments in my life with my own mom when I saw her there. I know some of you, maybe you didn't have the same. Maybe you struggled with your parents. Or maybe there's pain in relationship. I have scenes in my life, moments in my life I can recall where I turned and looked in difficult times when my mom was there. 
The first time I remember this was sitting in, uh, I was asleep, and my mom, I was going through a difficult time in my teenage years. I was pretty rebellious. I was driving my parents crazy. I know you, everybody watching, can't believe that Pastor Dan would ever be that kind of a rebel, but I drove my mom nuts. So I'm sleeping one night, and about 1 o'clock in the morning, I wake up, and I, and I, and I hear something in the doorway of my, of my bedroom, and I turn, and I look, and it's my mom, and she's sitting on a chair in the doorway, praying for her rebellious son. And some of the reasons, one of the big reasons I'm in ministry today, some of the reasons my rebellion lasted such a short time is I had a mother who had deep trust in God and a passionate, intense love for her son. And she was not going to give up on me. And here comes Mary to the cross. The disciples have fled. People are afraid. Other women are standing at a distance. And Mary is right there at the base of the cross, watching everything go down. And Jesus sees his mother there and the disciple whom he loves standing nearby. That's how John describes himself. It's, it's awesome. John <laughs> describes himself throughout his gospel as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Standing nearby, said to her, woman, here is your son, talking to John and Mary. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. See, most scholars believe that Joseph had already passed away, passed away before even Jesus' public ministry started. And in Jesus' last moments on the cross, he sees his mother, he honors his mother, he provides for her, making sure, because widows in those days had no rights. Uh, it, it's so much different in the 21st century. W w widows in the, in the first century had no rights. And Jesus mentions widows often in his ministry. There, there's the moment of the poor widow and her mites as she gave everything that she had. And the moment that Jesus raises the widow's son back to life such a powerful, powerful moment. He had to be maybe thinking in that moment of his own death, when his own mother being there, and he was heartbroken that this, this woman, this, this funeral procession was happening, and he raises this widow's son back to life and gives her son back, gives her son back to her. See, deep in her heart was a steadfast, courageous, tenacious love. All the, all the men, all the disciples were gone, except for John. And part of me wonders, did, did Mary make John go to the cross? Now, we don't have no Bible to support this, so let's just, let's just think a little bit outside the box for a moment, if we will. Because Mary was intense. I mean, with the first miracle that Jesus performs, like Jesus tells her, you know, it's not my time yet. I'm not ready to perform a miracle. And they're at this wedding feast and they run out of wine. And Mary comes to Jesus and says, hey, we ran out of wine. Do something about it. And Jesus is like, you know, why are you involving me in this? And Mary doesn't take no for an answer. She says, just do what my son says. And she walks away. She's like the boss, applesauce. She doesn't play any games. And there's another scene early in Jesus' ministry where Mary shows up with, the, with her other sons and she shows up to Jesus preaching and she's like gonna call him out because she's concerned about him and she tells him to come outside and Jesus has to deal with his mom in that moment. And maybe you had moments dealing with your mom growing up that trying to embarrass you, if you will. So Mary was bold and she was intense. Maybe Mary said, hey, John, here's the deal. You were one of the closest to him. You're going to the cross with me. I don't know how it all went down. Here's what I do know. Mary was at the cross in her son's darkest hour. And that's what real love does. Our top value that we talk about in our leadership here at Pure Heart is this, leaders love deeply. Peter writes it this way in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, I love this part, love one another deeply from the heart. The Greek word obeying here has to do with submission and trust. The word deeply here means fervent and intently. I have two questions for you this Mother's Day. For all of us, moms, dads, men, women, young and old, I have two questions for everybody listening today. The first question is this, will you trust God no matter the circumstance? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, do you have that kind of Mary trust? Lord, I am your servant. May it be done to me as you have said. Are you willing to trust God no matter what it is you're going through right now? Will you put the full weight of your life on him? And the second question is this, will you love deeply no matter how dark circumstances get? Will, will you love deeply? Will your love give up when things get rough? Will you walk out when things get difficult? Will you love deeply no matter how dark it gets. 
every single one of us, deep in our heart as we follow Jesus, longs to be a person of great trust and great love. I'm a little strange, and I think most of you know that I sometimes process life and deal with life in a little bit of a different way. And one of the things over the years that I think about every once in a while is the moment I leave this life, and then there's going to be this memorial service for my life. I've, I've actually, during, even during COVID-19, I've had to do um, a few memorial services during this time. And, and I, every time I do a memorial service, I think about the scene, what will happen in that moment when I leave this life for the best life. And I just want you to imagine with me for a moment. Imagine, you know, um, the memorial's over. And I mean, there were, there were you know, lots of people. Everybody said amazing things. Just, just pretend with me, all right? And everybody's kind of cleared out. And um, there's a moment where they've asked my family to just kind of linger for a second um, up front. And so they come down and they linger up front of the church. And everybody's gone except for my family. And so it's like, you know, it's Nicole and it's all three of our kids and their three amazing spouses who love Jesus. And it's my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. Let's just go along with it. I imagine for a moment I can lean in from heaven and I can hear what they're saying just in that moment. And here's what I once said in that moment. A lot of people talk about what do you want on your tombstone? And that's whatever. I think sometimes, what do I want said in those final moments at my memorial from those who are closest to me, who knew me well, the good, the bad, and the ugly? And here's what I'm longing for. I'm longing to hear from my family these words. Man, dad trusted Jesus. He trusted him with everything in his being. He lived a grand adventure with God. And we watched him from moment to moment put the full weight of his life on God. And then the last thing I want to hear them say is this. And oh, how he loved us. And I'd like to hear each one of them say, my dad was there in the darkest moments of my life. And he didn't give up on me. His love was tenacious. It was deep. It was real. I long for that. And I know that that's only going to happen in my life through the transformation and the power of God's presence, His Spirit, moving through my heart. And so this Mother's Day, I want to ask many of you to make the greatest decision of your life. So if you could bow your heads with me all over the country and around the world or wherever you're at, you bow your heads with me. And I'm going to ask you this question. Some of you, maybe for the first time, or maybe today is more of a rededication of your life to Christ. Maybe you're watching today and you're, the reason you're watching is because your mom said, hey, it's Mother's Day. The one thing I want you to do is I want you to watch the sermon with me today. And you've just been kind of like, oh, okay, okay. And then we started off and it was this whole thing with the pastor's kids and his wife. And you're like, okay, what's this all about? And But here we are in this all-important biggest decision of your life. For some of you for the first time, for some of you, it's a rededication for some of you today, would you say, I'm ready to put the full weight of my life on Jesus. I've tried it my own way. I've done it my own way. I need to go all in with him. And so I'm asking you, is today the day that you will say, Jesus, I trust you with my life? So if that's you and you're ready to go all in with Christ today, to experience his love, his power, to transform your heart, to create a life that trusts God deeply and loves deeply, then pray this with me. Lord Jesus, in this moment, I commit my life to you. Jesus, you know my life, you know my sin, you know the things I've done that are wrong, and I confess them as wrong, and I give them to you right now. Thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your power, fill me with your hope, your love, your joy, your peace. I need you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me deeply and never giving up on me. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. I love you, family. Let's dive right back into worship. Let's worship with all of our hearts.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your olive
for your presence. God, no matter where we're at, no matter what state we're in, you are with us. And Lord Jesus, you paid the ultimate price that we can't even begin to comprehend what it cost you. That it cost you your blood and it cost you your body broken and that you would be separated downcast, spit on, mocked. And we just celebrated the fact that you rose from the dead, that you overcame death and you conquered the grave, even sin. God, that so we could have eternal life with you. So we could even live kingdom values here and now. God, and as all this stuff is going on in our city, in our state, our country, even the world, None of it's a surprise to you, God. You hold the world in your hands like that childhood song, God. You hold it all in your hands. And we just thank you, God, that you have a plan that as we seek your face more than we seek your hand, God, that you will bless us and that you will give us wisdom in this season and in this time for our families, for the body of Christ. And we just bless your name and we give you all the praise that you are due in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us in worship today. It's such an awesome thing to be able to worship together, even afar. And there's so many amazing things happening at Pure Heart. And for more on that, Pastor Matt's going to share. If you click that button or you raise your hand to accept Christ, then visit pureheart.org slash weekendconnect so we can walk on this journey with you. And for everyone who joined us during the service, thank you for spending your time with us today. If you're looking for any of the links that we mentioned during the service, you're joining us for the first time, you need prayer, or you wanna help with our COVID-19 response teams, you'll find all of those ways to get connected. Also at that link, pureheart.org slash weekendconnect. Also, a big thank you to all our amazing volunteers who've been helping during this time of crisis. If you don't live in the Phoenix metro area, this is our chance, this is our time to show Christ to our neighbors. So please, please make sure you're connecting with your local churches, food banks, and nonprofits that are standing in the gap and being Christ to your community. Remember family, you're loved and you're not alone. So have an amazing week, Pure Heart, as we continue to love like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways.